following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. This is the fourth lecture related with Cain and Abel. Today we are going to talk about repentance, which of course uh, uh, we will understand if we follow the chapter written in the book of Genesis, the chapter number fourth, <coughs> which relate with that uh, myth, the Hebraic myth of Cain and Abel. Everything, as we have stated in other lectures, is inside of us. This uh, myth of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, and the rest is an alchemical mystery. The tree of alchemy is called in Genesis Da'at, or the tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. And of course, as you uh, remember, if you read the, the Bible, that uh, Cain and Abel are the children of Adam and Eve that were the offspring after the downfall or the temptation of the serpent, which we talk in several lectures. But it is necessary for us to comprehend the tree of life, which is in the middle of the garden as it is written and the relation of this tree with our physicality and our psyche and all the forces that uh, flow in our organism. Of course, the book is written in Hebrew and that's why we always appeal to the Hebrew language because within this language is hidden wisdom, the secrets. And uh, of course, if you uh, read in the, your Bible, the fourth chapter, you will follow the sequence of this uh, uh, mystery of Cain and Abel. Uh, to begin, we had to quote a statement of the master Wiracocha, <coughs> who was uh, uh, named Arnold Krumheller when he was alive uh, in the last century. He has stated that the, the Sethians, in reference to the third son of Adam and Eve, Seth. He says the Sethians were sons 
as you and sun worshippers. And they stated that the sun with its emanation form a nest within our organism and that constitute the serpent. Now, when you go into the Hebrew language and inquire, how do we write nest in Hebrew? Then we discover that is Cain. That's the meaning of the word, Cain, nest. So in other words, Krumheller is stating uh, that the nest, the serpent, that fire it in itself is Cain. And of course, this is how it is explained in the, also in the Bible. <coughs> because remember that Cain is the first son of Adam and Eve after the temptation of the serpent. So is its seed, in other words. It is stated there in the book of Genesis, in chapter 3, that uh, Jehovah Elohim said to the serpent, I will put enmity between your seed and Eve's seed. So obviously, Cain and Abel refer to that enmity, or the beginning of that enmity between the seed of Eve and the seed of the serpent. That we are going to explain in detail for us to deeply comprehend what we already know. Because I suppose that you already heard the other three lectures. But I will repeat again in order for us to comprehend. And uh, the whole meaning of this, or secret, is hidden within the sacred name of God. Which in Kabbalah is written with four letters. And that uh, in uh, Greek, we call it the Tetragrammaton, the four-lettered named. Why is the Tetragrammaton the four-lettered name? Because it is written with four letters. Yod, He, Vav, He. And we repeat it many times in our lectures that that is the holy name of God written in Hebrew. Yod, He, Bav, He. Four letters. And that is translated in the Bible as Jehovah. Sometimes it is not related as Jehovah, but as the Lord. And uh, we, in esotericism, we translate this word yod he vav he as yod hava, <coughs> so to synthesize yod hava, which refers, of course, at the two polarities, male female, in other words, because that name is androgynous. God is not male, neither female, but both. And of course, we are going to explain here how. Since uh, when you see the tree of life, which of course in the website it is a tool there when you can easily uh, maneuver in order to see the meaning of every sephira or sphere related with this tree. The tree of life is formed by ten circles, which are the symbol of the ten parts of God and refer to everything in the universe and in us. We always talk about the first triangle, which is Keter, Chokmah, and Bina. That in Christianity is called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in Hinduism, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Of course, this Holy Trinity emanates from the light, which is above, you see, the Ains of Or, 
which becomes, in this case, the other letter. Because Keter is the Yod, Chokmah is the He, Bina is the Vav, and the Ein Sof Or, which is the light, is the other He. That is the great light, which Krum Heller says that the Sethians adore or worship the great light, because they were some worshippers. That great light is the Ein Sof Or, that we call the absolute sun, the solar absolute. That's the great. Because the physical sun here, of course, is a physical manifestation of that light. But when we state that the Sethians were worshippers of the sun, we are referring to the hidden sun, which is in the seventh dimension. And from it emanates the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in order to form the holy name, yod heh bab -He, which is, of course, related with the law of creation. <coughs> in order for this triangle to create, we explained, they descend into this mysterious sephirah, which is below it, which is called Da'at. And Da'at is knowledge, is gnosis, or the tree of good and evil. And by studying this mysterious circle is how we comprehend the whole mythology of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. But for that, of course, you need a lot of uh, comprehension and meditation. I, uh, I will try to be uh, very explicit in detail in order for you to comprehend. Because this triangle plus this uh, sphere, which is that, relates to the head, to our head. Physically speaking, that is here, in the throat, hmm? related with the word. And of course, above you have the two hemispheres of the brain, Chochma and Bina, the two parts of the brain. And on the top we have Keter, which means crowned, which is that halo of light. <coughs> which is always uh, floating, hovering on top of the head. Everybody has that in different levels. Because we always state that we have the atom of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the head. But remember that when we talk about creation, we talk about the Word. And creation is that knowledge because it is written in the book of Genesis that God said there will be light and there was light so creation relates with the word in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God so bear in mind that Bear in the, your mind that, because it is important. Remember that it is written that God said, let us create the human being according to our image, according to our likeness. Now he said. So of course it is also written that the human being was created with the dust of the earth. But we have to understand, as we explain in all the lectures, that that dust referred to all the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. 22 letters that are used in order to write what we say. And the Bible is written with that dust or letters. So when the Bible said that God created man with the, from the dust of the earth, it is talking about the 22 arcana, or mysteries. And of course, that expresses themselves through the throat, 
through that word, which we always state is the is Christ, because the word in Hebrew is I mean in in Greek means logos. We talk about the logos. When we talk about the logos, we talk about the Son. We said the Father is the first logos, the Son is the second logos, and the Holy Spirit is the third logos. But when talking about the logos expressed, expressing itself as creation, it is the second. Chokmah. That's why when we refer to the logos, we refer to chokmah, which means wisdom which is Christ. And uh, which is in charge of that. Because the first triangle here is in charge of Keter, which is the crown. But the second triangle is in charge of that because all the triangles below in the tree of life all the sephirah, which are seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, below that is the expression of the sun. Now, how do you say sun in Hebrew? You say it with two letters. Well, you write it with two letters, but you say it ben. So ben means sun. With bet and nun. The letter B and the letter N. Only two letters. Because in the Hebrew alphabet, all alphabet, there no, were not uh, vowels. So this is how you said Ben. So this Ben, Sun, is the outcome, of course, of the mother and the father. Because if there is no father or mother, there is no son. Who is this father and mother? Is that mysterious unfoldment of the Holy Spirit, which is called Bina, in that? And we say that in many lectures. That the Holy Spirit is the father of the son. And you find that in many mysteries or mythologies. In Christianity, for instance, it is stated that the son... Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ, was the son of the Holy Spirit and Mary, which represents the feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is two. In other words, this trinity unfolds themselves into two in that. So that is a mysterious sephira of the duality which we call Yod Hava or Jehovah. Now, as I am saying, in Hebrew you write Ben with two letters, with the letter Bet and the letter Nun. That's Ben, son. But this son is the outcome of the father or the mother. And the father is a yod, which is the letter I in Latin. And the mother is the letter He, which is the letter A of the word B, Na. You see, this is what you have right? B, Na. So the letter yod is between the bet and the nun. And the letter He is at the end of that name. That's why we said Bina, the Holy Spirit. But in Bina, the Holy Spirit, you find that duality and the Son in that. Now that Son is the letter Bab of the Holy Name. You see? Yod the Father, He the Mother, Bab the Son, and He his wife, the wife of the son. Or in other words, as we say, Yod is the phallus, He is the uterus, 
Vav is a man, He is a woman. You see that, we always, we always say that. But in us, of course, the letter Vav, which is the sun in the universe, represents the lower Sephiroth. Hesed, Gebura, Tiferef, Netza, Hod, Yesod, and Malkut. Letter Vav. That's why when we said Vav, we always refer to the sun of the two polarities. Which, in the book of Revelation, they said the seven churches of Asia, of the seven magnetic centers that we have in the spinal medulla. Now, if you see, I told you that this upper triangle plus that relates to the head. That is the throat. Chokhmah and Bina relates to the left and right hemispheres of the brain. And on top we have the crown, that light of Keter. But then in the spinal column, in the medulla, we have the seven churches or the book of Revelation, the seven magnetic centers that relate to the seven lower sephiroth or spheres of the tree of life. So in other words, in our physicality, we have the whole tree of life. That's why we said the tree of life refers to the head and the spinal medulla. And that is what is called the tree of life. We always state that the tree of life is our, our spinal medulla <coughs> with the head which in science, in medicine, they call it the central nervous system. And this is precisely what we have to understand. Here in this physical world, this is our central nervous system. Now, Malkut, which is the last sephira here, the very bottom, is always referred to the physical body. And to the chakra Muladhara. which is where we find that mysterious fire that we talk about of God, which is where we find the nest of the serpent. Because we said that the sun with its emanations form a nest. And that is the muladhara, the nest, the root of that fire, which is related with Malkut. And with this relation with our physical body. Because through the chakras of our physical body, we attract all that energy. And finally, in all the journey through the metabolism of the physical body, reaches the chakra muladhara. So that is the nest. That is arcane, in other words. In potentiality. Now, uh, as is written in the Bible, when God created Adam, he created male, female. So he was not male. He was male, female in the beginning. In other words, the light of the father and mother in that were projecting the soul of that androgynous male female into the physical body. So those beings that existed in Lemuria, as we talk in many other lectures, were vehicles of God. In other words, Yol He, father mother in heaven, were within Vav He, which was or where Adam and Eve in one body. Of course, all that light, which is called Or in Hebrew, gave to that androgynous being beauty. And that is what in Hebrew uh, is written uh, with Shin. The letter of fire is called Shephir. They said Saphir, 
But I like Shafir because it's with Shin. That Shafir or Safir is beauty. But it's that beauty which is the aura that expresses us in the psyche and in the physicality. You can see that, for instance, in a newborn. That light, that beauty is shown in the, in, in, in the physical body of the child and in, also in the psyche, the innocence. There is no ego there. There is no sin. Everything is beautiful. So that's precisely what we have to understand. When the Eve was taken out from that androgynous Adam, then Adam became the representation of the two male forces within him. These two male forces are the Yod and the Vav of the Holy Name, which relate the Yod to the head and the Vav to the spinal medulla. Because we stated that the Vav, the letter Vav in the Hebrew alphabet, is an extension of the letter Yod. That's the male part of God. The female is represented by the two letters He of the holy name. This is Yod He, Vav He. So these two He's were within Eve. And that's why Eve is called Hava. Of course, when the separation in, in sexes occurred, Adam was reflecting the light of the soul of Keter, the father, in his body. And Eve was reflecting the light of the mother in heaven in her body. So both of them were beautiful. That is what we call, I repeat, Safir in Hebrew. This word is used in order to express <coughs> that water that envelops the fetus in the womb of the woman. They call it Mi Safir, which is that liquid or fluid in the womb where the fetus is floating. And it's of course because the light or the fire that is reflecting, reflected in the aura of Adam and Eve were coming from the water, the water of Genesis. Remember that it is stated that from Eden, which is that, a river was coming that was divided in four branches or four rivulets. Those four rivulets are the two polarities that we are talking about here. Yod, He, Bav, He. Two are masculine and two are feminine. When the separation of sexes, Adam took two rivulets in his physical body and Eve took the other two rivulets or two waters of creation in other words. That's why when we talk about those rivulets, we talk about Shamayim, which means the waters of heaven. And then in the Bible, it's related as heaven. And when we talk about the other rivers, it's called Mayim, which means water. So that is the me, or the water that surrounds the fetus in the womb of the mother. Of course, we had to state as we explained in the previous lecture, that the brain and the spinal medulla are floating in that cerebral spinal fluid, which is, of course, that, that water or fluid that takes the brain and the spinal medulla. You can see that in 
that is floating. That's the male aspect of that fire that we are talking about here. The brain develops according to that water. And of course, the other water, or the other two rivulets that we're talking here, are related with the sexual fluid that in a man is placed in the prostate. It's called semen. And in the woman is placed in the uterus. It's called semen. This is how we call it in esotericism, both of them. Feminine semen and masculine semen. That's the fluid of the Divine Mother. The fluid of Ima, as we said in esotericism. That is related with that commandment that we read. Honor father and mother. Father is Adam. And mother is Eve. The two fluids. They always, in Christianity, state us or in Judaism, that we are children of Adam and Eve. We are. But we have to understand that those polarities are within the, our physicality. And they are entering, entering into action in the sexual act. Because it is written that when Adam knew his wife, that knew relates to sexual act. Because through the sexual act is how men and women know each other. Because the synthesis of everything that we are is in the water called semen. Which in Sanskrit is called Ida and Pingala. The two polarities. And it is very uh, intriguing to see that what in Sanskrit says Ida, in Hebrew, that word Ida means to know. In other words, in order for us to know each other or to develop knowledge, we do it through Ida, to the sexual energy. Because, because there is hidden all creation. But you see, the sexual energy, as we explained to you in the previous lecture, was divided into polarities. The two hays of the holy name. Because there are two hays there. One hay is in the man, and the other hay is in the woman. In other words, the sexual genitalia is the hay in the man and in the woman, which are different. But, the, but, but both contain the same energy. But one is masculine and the other is feminine. So that's why we refer, we always refer, it's said, when we talk about the sexual organ, this is hay in men and women. When the, the men and the woman were united in the sexual act, that hay of the Hebrew alphabet was transformed into Het. You see, there are two letters in the Hebrew alphabet that are similar. The He, which has a gap in the left side, and the Het, which has no gap, which symbolizes the union of the two polarities. So when Adam and Eve became sexually united, then they were forming the name Hava, sexually speaking. Chava in the sexual act. Before that, they were Chava. Very similar. Chava. Very, very subtle. Chava. But now they are united. They are Chava. Yeah. Because the hey sounds like a breath. And they write that as a. So Chava, translated into English, is Eve. And that's why the brain, which is Adam, of both sexes, when they were united sexually, and there, of course, they were forming the word Chava with their sexual organs. 
because both polarities were united. And that was, it is written, that Hava is the mother of the living. In other words, in the sexual act, we create life. Because the letter Het means life. This is why uh, you write Hava with Het. In the transformation. Everything is hidden there in that name, the holy name of God. Jehovah or Jehovah. Well, it is written, as you will read <coughs> in the first chapter, that when Adam, the brain, the central nervous system, met Hava, she begot Cain. But if you read literally there, it's very easy to see that it says, And Adam knew Eve, Hava. To know Eve, Hava, is to perform the sexual act, because Hava is a sexual act of both sexes, united. The two heads united is Hava. And after that says, his wife. But it should said, his fire, or the fire of the sexual organ. Alchemically, we will say, and Adam knew the fire of the sexual organ in the sexual act, that in Hebrew is called Isha, and is translated as his wife. Because in the physical organism, we have two fires. The first fire is within the cerebral spinal fluid. And the other fire, which is the feminine, is in the semen. Two fires. One is masculine and the other is feminine. This is what in Sanskrit is called Ida and Pingala. And that in Kabbalah, which says, is Odd and orb. Or odd and obd, to be more precise. Obd. So when you read there in the first uh, verse, it says, And Adam knew the fire of the sexual organ, and the sexual organ created Cain. So Cain is that precisely outcome of the two fires. Because after that, Eve said, I have created a man from yod he bav he or from yod Chava. Man in Hebrew is Ish. So, of course, that ish is that fire that we are talking here, which is masculine, that was created by, this, by the sexual contact. In the beginning, as we said in other lectures, Adam and Eve were, of course, performing the sexual act in the temples. In that ancient continent called Lemuria, because that race of Adam and Eve relates to the race of Lemuria. So the Lemurians were performing the sexual act in the temples and were guided by the Elohim, by the angels. Because they were, of course, learning how to manipulate that nest, that cane, that fire in the sexual organs in order to develop within them that uh, creature or being that will be similar to the gods, knowing good and evil. Of course, so that Cain, it is written there in that chapter, 
was a tiller of the ground. Listen carefully to this. The word tiller in Hebrew is obd. That is exactly the word, obd. So Cain was the obd of the ground, alchemically speaking. What is that ground? Is the physicality, which in Hebrew is called Adama. If Adam is the brain in the spinal medulla, Adama is your physicality your femininity, your sexual organ as well. That is Adama. So the serpent that we call Ida, Obd, which is called in Hebrew also Ra, evil, is precisely Cain. Because the two polarities Good and evil are called in Hebrew Tob and Ra. Good and evil. So Cain was in the style of Ra. Where is Ob? So it's very clear and literally saying there that Cain was the serpent of, of the caduceus of Mercury, of the ground, which is a sexual organ. In other words, when men and women were united in the sexual act, they were, of course, developing that Ra, the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, which is the left, because that tree is in relation with the sex, with the sexual organ. While the tree of life, as we explained, is related with the spinal medulla, what we call Adam. That's why Adam received the outcome of Eve after the sexual act. It is written that after Eve, the sexual organ, created Cain, she created Habel. The Bible says, in the relation says, Abel, but really the pronunciation of that is Habel. And that name is hidden, the letter He, in the beginning, which is translated as A, but it's really Habel, which means breath or steam. Of vapor. So, in other words, the sexual organ in the very sexual act also emitted a breath which was going towards the pineal gland because the word bell in Chaldean means. The Tower of Fire. Bell. You remember that book, which is a, a, an apocrypha, called Bell and the Dragon, related with Daniel, the prophet. It's not in the Bible, but belongs to the Bible. It's apocrypha. Bell, of course, is that Chaldean word that relates to to the top of your head. Even in Hebrew, they say, Kabbalistically speaking, that the letter Lamed is a tower on top of your head. And the letter Bet of Bereshit, Genesis, relates to that fire of the sun, father of Chokmah. So when you said Bel, you're talking about the fire of the sun floating in your head. From that bell comes the word Belen. In Spanish, they said the town of Belen, which in English is Bethlehem. But Belen is better. It was referred to that. Because the second son 
of the sexual organ called Chava, Eve, was that breath. Habel. That in the previous lecture we explained rises from the sexual organs and goes to the head, to the pineal gland. To nourish the three primary forces that we have in the head. So at that time in Lemuria, as we explained, they committed the mistake of performing the sexual act out of the temples. And of course, at that moment was when Cain killed Abel. Because in the beginning, in the beginning that alchemical work that the Lemurians, Lemurians were doing, they were rising Cain, because he was a tiller of the ground, the serpent of, of Arama, and Habel was the breath that naturally was nourishing the body and the brain. And that's why it is stated that with the passing of time, Cain brought the fruits of the ground. How did he brought the fruits of the ground? Of course, through orb. Because this is the left side of the tree of good and evil, of the caduceus of mercury, that rises to the brain. But in the brain, where we have the atom of the Holy Spirit, it is written that God was not pleased with the fruits of Cain. Because they were from the left side, from the side of Ra, of evil. Meaning that they are mixed with the impressions of the physical world. With the mind, in other words. Because that Cain, at the end, became the mind in the brain, which is submitted to the senses. And you know, all the impressions that we receive, we always enjoy the physical world, and the rest, at the end, we think in God. That was Cain, giving the leftover of all his work to God. But Habel, that was coming also from Eve, was in the right side, what we call Tov, good. And giving the firstlings, the milk, or in other words, the main thing of the sexual energy, the forces, the hormones, to the brain and to the pineal gland. So God was pleased, liked the offering of Habel, and displeased the offering of Cain. That was, of course, at that time, because when that humanity fell into sin, Cain was bringing children into the world with fornication. But it is written that the Lemurians fornicated, or in other words, or reached the orgasm, the spasm of the animals, only when they wanted a child. That's it. The other time, when they were not in a sexual act, Habel was given that force to God. But even though God didn't like the actions of Cain, which were fornication, imagine, but they only performed the sexual act when they wanted a child, just for procreation. That was just once in a while. And they were already fallen in sin because they were tempted by the serpent. That serpent is obed. the serpent related with procreation. They wanted just a child once in a while, but not under the command of Jehovah, under their own will. 
And that's why the inner God never liked that. The offerings of Cain. But with Habel, he was pleased. But, of course, it is written that with time, <coughs> the face of Cain, says the Bible, became angry. Wrath. But the right translation should be, should be became burned with passion. Hmm? They can burn with passion. In other words, they fornicated more often. No longer for procreation, just for fun. So Cain's countenance fell. He became a Nephilim, says the Bible. Nephel. To fall. The continence means that the whole fire went down to the ground. And that energy that Havel was taking to develop the brain was completely taken for fornication. Habel was no longer having an opportunity to nourish the brain and to the inner, the inner psyche. Cain took everything for him and awoke in evil. With the passing of time. It is written that they were in the field. Field is Shada in Hebrew, which means in the sexual organ. Because these are the two polarities. Of and odd were in the sexual organ, and odd or walk or rose, he says, rise up against Habel. What we say is this that the fire, the sexual fire, or walk against the breath that was going to the brain, took all the energy that was nourishing the brain and the theory of the physicality. Only for the satisfaction of the sexual act. In other words, Habel was killed. Habel is related with our soul in the heart. That soul that all of you know is called Budata. So when we said Budata, the embryo of soul that everybody have is precisely that habel, that breath. Because that breath that comes from the sex nourishes the soul, and develops. But when you fornicate, that soul is no longer receiving any, any nourishment. And of course, uh, uh, in Hebrew, soul is neshama. But the part of neshama, which is also breath in Hebrew, you see, neshama means also breath. It is written that, and God breatheth into the nostrils of Adam the breath of life. Is the neshama of life. And Adam came a living soul. So that breath is also habel, means also breath. I mean, this is a small breath part of Neshama. We always state the embryo of soul is part of the spiritual soul. We have it here. But it's dead. It's dead because Cain killed it. But this Cain, of course, is our own actions. Because we love evil. We love fornication, in other words. The orgasm, the spasm of the beasts. Related with Ob. Ob is the one that relates to that. And that's why it is written. That Jehovah said to Cain. What are you burned? With passion? Enraged? Wrath? And why is your countenance fallen? 
It's obvious because you are not doing good. If you do good, he says, as Abel does mechanically, automatically by raising the hormones in the right side towards the brain, you will be uh, reward, rewarded. But if you do not do good, in other words, if you do evil, fornication, sin is at the door. What sin? The sin of fornication, of course. And that lust will depend on you because you are the fire in the sexual act. So that sin, which is lust, always climb to Cain in order to be satisfied. And Cain depends of it, becomes related with it. This is what it is written there. Of course, <coughs> before, when we were practicing and manipulating the fire of the sexual organ, in a positive way, we were in Yesod. You see the tree of life? Malkut is the earth. Now talking macrocosmically. Malkut is the earth and above the earth is Yesod, which we always say is the Garden of Eden, which is on top, on the face of the earth, in other words. And when the humanity was not so degenerated, still they were on the surface of the earth in Yesod. But when they fornicated, when Cain killed Abel, and then the God from the brain appears there and asks, Where is your brother, the breath? Because he is no longer receiving nourishment from Habel. So he's, where is Habel? He is always bringing me this nourishment, this fire. Where is he? He goes down to the earth and finds Cain fornicating. Where is your brother? What, what have you done? Because the breath, the life, or, or the voice, they say the, the voice of your brother. The voice is the fire. That entity of the fire which is in the body calls or screams for, for, to me from the ground he says from Adama in other words the whole Budata is enslaved from Cain is dead and he says am I the keeper of my brother. Because it's, where is it? He says, I do not know. You know the word to know there? That, knowledge, means, when he says, I do not know, means, I now know in the evil way. Hmm? Which is my way, says Cain. So, Abel is on the other side. Am I the guardian of Abel? The keeper of my brother? Of course. Because the two polarities work together in sex. The two serpents of the caduceus of Mercury depend off the bottom. When we abuse of fornication on the evil side, we kill the soul, which is on the right side. And that's precisely the enmity, what is written, that it says, I, put, I will place enmity between you and your seed. The seed of the serpent is Cain. Plus the seed of the woman is Habel. The two polarities. And it is written, because you have done this, you will be a vagabond and a fugitive from the earth.
And of course, that is the first punishment. To be a vagabond and fugitive from the, from the earth is what Cain says after that. You are now taking me out from the face of the earth. What is the face of the earth? The face of the earth is Yesod. So he took completely all of that soul or that humanity and sent it down underneath the earth. What is underneath the earth? It's hell. Klipoth in Kabbalah. Inferno. But Cain repent when he saw his condition. What do you mean fugitive and vagabond? You are just condemning to go to hell. And he repent. That's the first repentance. He said, okay, you will not be a, a fugitive, but you will be a vagabond. Took the fugitive out and put you out the vagabond. The vagabonds, where do they live? They live in the first sphere of Klippoth, which is called Limbo, which the Bible calls the land of Nod. In the book of Sohar, it says the land of Nod is uh, Arka, which is for Orco, Orcus of the classics, the Limbo. So since that time, humanity, of course, went out from Yesod, which is Eden, the Garden of Eden above the earth, which is the fourth dimension, and all humanity fell into the land of Nod. And since there, since that time, we live in Nod, which is the first sphere of hell, limbo. We are physically here, of course, on top of the surface. But when we go to bed to sleep, where do we go? As Habel, as soul, with our cane, our mind, we go to limbo. Which is exactly a duplicate of this civilization in which we are. The land of Nod. Of course, Cain says, well, if somebody find me, will kill me. And then uh, God says, the one that kills uh, Cain shall be avenged seven times. Hmm? Sevenfold. You wonder why seven times? Well, it is easy to see when you know Kabbalah and alchemy. <coughs> because it is also written that he put a sign in Cain. So if somebody finds him, he will know that, oh, this is Cain, that's the sign of God. But what is that sign? The Sohar, Kabbalistic book, says, it is the letter Vav. That's the sign. And the letter Vav is the sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And of course, here you find a mysterious name, the 666. The letter Yod. I mean, Vav is related with one, two, three, four, five, six, Sephiroth, and Malkut, seven. That's why it says seven times. Why? Because Habel, the soul, that breath, it comes from the sex, nourishes all the Sephiroth. All the spinal medulla, the seven chakras, the seven churches, to the brain. Easy to see. Right? That's why seven. Because the energy of from sex has to rise seven. And that is in relation with Habel. Because Habel has to come here, to the top of the head. Like the tower. The dome mistake that with the tower of Babel, which is different. But it's also there, Habel. You see? Everything is hidden in the mysterious words in the Hebrew language. So, 
have to be avenged seven times. Related to the seven sephirah, related with the true men, because we always say the true men have seven bodies. The physical body, the vital body, the emotional body, the mental body, the body of willpower, the body of the consciousness, and the spirit. That is above the true man. And that's why Solomon the king wrote in Ecclesiastes, or Ecclesiasticus in the Bible, breath of breath. Breath of breaths. Everything is breath. In the Bible, of course, it is translated as vanity of vanities. Vanity of vanities. Everything is vanity. In Kabbalah, when you name a word once in singular, that means it's a number one. If you name it in plural, that means it's two. Simple. So when you said vanity of vanities, means three vanities. But if you repeat again vanity of vanities, it's six vanities. And if you said everything is vanity, oh, this is seven vanities. You see? And vanity is translated as habel, but it also means breath. So that breath, of course, is seven. In other words, Cain killed habel Seven times. Because if he was nourishing, Habel was nourishing all the bodies, of course, when he killed Habel, he was punished seven times. So they would have to be avenged seven times. Really with the body. Therefore, of course, when Cain repents, enters again into the path, he has to resuscitate his own Habel within himself. This is what we have to do. Because all of us that came here to this lecture and that listened to the lecture, we are Cain, individually speaking. We have that punishment of fornication. But to repent means do not fornicate. That's why we state always, the sixth commandment of the law of God is, you shall not commit fornication. That's the number six, Kabbalistically speaking. Fundamentally, put that commandment, who knows in, in which number, because they don't know Kabbalah. But it's the number six. And that's precisely the first commandment given unto Adam and Eve. From the tree of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, you shall not eat. Because the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. Of course, the tree of death is clear path. This is how you knew death. Before humanity was with the tree of life within and with God within, they were immortal. But when they fornicated, they separated. The lower hay of the holy name and the only thing that remains in each one of us above is yod he vav Is that holy name that Moses says is Iao. Among the Gnostics, we say, Yao is the God, and we are the He. So in order for us to really repent, is to unite against the soul, Habel, to the spirit. That soul is in the letter He, which is fallen, which is Malkut, which is in the land of Nod. This He, this physical body, is fallen. Because my sins of fornication. What do we have to do in order to go up to God again? To do, to do the religion. The religare. The rebinding. This is the word religion. The rebinding again. It doesn't mean to believe in something. Or to memorize the Bible. No, it says to do alchemy. You, do, you, you have to rebind your physicality. To your spirituality. You have to rebind your psyche to your spirit. And this is only possible when Cain stops fornicating. Because if we keep fornication, if the mind of us is enjoying always fornication, orgasm, spasm, 
that letter He is always separated. It's in the land of Nod. And that's why it is stated that Yod, He, Vav, I, Ao is always in heaven. It's the monad. The one that goes to hell is the other He, which symbolizes the downfall of that part. You see how it is clear there, alchemically and cabalistically speaking? So to repent means to return. Now you have to learn how to not to fornicate. How to transmute the sexual energy. How that Cain, which is Ob, which is the tiller of the ground, ob to start taking the energy for the brain, for the psyche. Because the negligent, those that are weak, that have no willpower to do it, they will go to hell. Deeper. Because that's the land of Nod. Related to the world of Klippoth. In which we are, all of us are there. To go out of hell is only when you, you start leaving hell is when you realize, oh, I was in hell. You know? It's not that we are going to go there. We are there. Only in the first sphere, of course. If we are in this physicality, in this physical body, because still they give us opportunity. That's why it is written that when Cain fell, and was living in the land of Nod, which is Limbo. He had a son. And his name was Enoch. Which means educator. Or education. So he built, of course, his brain in relation with the physical world, with Limbo. And that's why it is written that this Enoch built an intellect. Of course, it says uh, build is written with Bina. It says Bina. Bina means intellect, intelligence also in the Bible. And when it says build a city, that city in Hebrew means Irad, which is his son, because he says that he named that city with the name of his son, Irad. But Irad means multitudes, because what do you find in a city? A lot of people. So Ira is a city. Irad is the name of Enoch. That means that that education was expressed as civilization in that time, in Lemuria. The Bible called those uh, groups of people that learn how to awaken evil and for evil, that were the, Enoch, the Enochians, because they were seers. But seers only in Klippoth. They were called Amalekim, which are related with the heads of many. Melech is king, but Amalekim refers to those uh, beings related with Enoch and Irad, civilization of black magicians that develop, of course, and control the world at that time. And still, in this day and age, the Amalekim, the children of Amalek, are the reflection of Keter, but in hell, in Klippoth. You see, Keter is crowned, is a king. But the contrary in Klippoth is called Amalek, the head of demons. King Solomon wrote the conjuration of the seven in order to conjure the Amalek. 
Those Amalekim are the ones, of course, that were destroyed in the time of Atlantis with the universal flood. But there we have in this day and age our own particular Malekim, <coughs> Amalekim, that secretly governed all the countries, all of these civilizations, politicians, heads that have a lot of money, a lot of power. Those are the Amalekim that will be destroyed. And they were destroyed in the time of Atlantis and in the time of Lemuria. They are called also giants. But because in Lemuria, of course, these uh, beings were very tall, 10 to 15 meters of stature, very big. And of course, uh, Irad engendered this other being that in the the sense there is written <coughs> that uh, Irad begat Mehuhael. This Mehuhael means wiped off God. In other words, they, after that, they wiped. God from themselves completely. Because El is God at the end of any word. So Mehuhal means wipe off. And those are called the Geburim. Because the one from Irad, the, the son of Enoch, are called Nephilim. Abortions. In the Bible it says the Nephilim, the giants. But Nephil means abortion. Nephilim, abortions. What in esotericism we call Hanasmus. Abortions of nature. Double polarity. You see, there is always in each one of us a double polarity. The divinity and the, and the devil within us. That's called Nephilim. And the Geburim. The Geburim, of course, related with Mahalel, Mahuhael, or Mehuhael, they begat the Rephaim, which is related with Methusael. Methusael means a beggar that perish. There was a devolution of those creatures that were in fornication in the land of Nod. The land of Nod. Of course, it's also written about the Geburim, which means the strong ones. It's written in the Bible. That the children of God had intercourse, intercourse with the daughters of, of, uh, of, the, of men. And they begot the Geburim, mighty men that were of renown. Still they exist. They were the ones that built the Tower of Babel, esoterically speaking. In order for, they say, let us find us a name and build a city, they say. Those are the ones that take the knowledge in order for them to stand out. Let us build a group. Let us build an association. And only to stand up with our name. Like in a Tower of Babel. That's called the Geburim. Let it with Geburah. Of course, these mighty ones were destroyed also in the universal flood. Because the true doctrine is, let us adore the name of Job Chava, our own particular God. Not let us build a city in order for us to be named, you know. Because this is precisely what all, all, all the esotericists, they work very hard. And at the end, they want them, everybody to know, hey, I am the master such and such. I had built this so you can adore me. 
And of course, the people that follow those uh, beings are uh, idol worshippers. Because uh, the personality shouldn't be adored. But the Geburim were the one that built the Tower of Babel in order to be adored, to be worshipped. And they knew the knowledge. But they were doing it or practicing it in their own way. So, the Rephaim, that were the outcome of Methusael, the beggars, are called the shadows of the dead. Those are, of course, those that were entering into the knowledge of alchemy at that time, but never did anything. You see, the shadow of, of the light, light is Christ, is the sun. The sun in, in Kabbalah is Israel, or Israel. Those particles of God which are within us that sh should shine. But when you are negligent, you don't do anything for yourself, you don't transmute your sexual energy, neither you uh, annihilate the ego in the sexual act with, the, with alchemy, then you become a refaim, a shadow. You might know the knowledge. In this day and age, you find many refaim, shadows, that know the Bible by memory, that preach the Bible, that preach other books of other religions. They are, of course, uh, devotees of this or that sect or that or this or that religion. But they are shadows because they don't practice what they preach. And along with them come the Anakim, which relate to Lamech, the song of Methuselah. Who are the Malachim? Lamech means good for nothing. This is the right translation of the word. Good for nothing. So here we are in this earth filled with good for nothing. And those good for nothing are the ones that make trouble to the children of Israel. Of course, in the Bible is written, My son, listen to the commandments of your father and follow the Dharma, the Torah of your mother in Proverbs. Put them as a chain around your neck. It's a beautiful proverb. But the, those that we call the Anakim means chains. When you read that proverb, it says, put that an Anakim around your neck. Means the Dharma, the law of your mother, which is, of course, a sexual force. But in the other side, the Anakim are those that uh, live in chains. Because they don't use the sexual force of their mother in the right way. The mother is a sexual organ. They're the fornicators. They're everywhere. They know the doctrine, whatever. <coughs> but they uh, do not practice it. Good for nothing, is the Bible calls them. That's why this Lamech, it is written, that he had two wives. This is the only day when you have, oh, why is the Bible saying that Lamed had two wives? Wives means Isha, fires. Hmm? Fires in the sexual act. Fires. It says the first wife of Lamech, her name was Ada. Well, the letter He is at the end of the name. And the other part of the word is odd. That means that what part of that Lamech, or the good for nothing, is odd, which is the cerebral spinal fluid. That's the odd, which is called father. 
is called father. That's why from that father comes two currents, two flows of energy from your spinal column. The good for nothing, all of us, good for nothing, have that. And then the, the first, they said that Ada of Od, or the hay of the sexual organ, had two children. The first one, it says there, was uh, Yaval. If you see the word Yaval has the letter Bet in Lamed of Bel, which is the fire that we're talking about, related with the spinal, cerebral and spinal uh, fluid. And because Yaval is written with Yod in the beginning, which is masculine, is the father. And that's why it says, is the father of those that are living in tents and which take care, take care of cattle. Huh? This especially in this civilization, we find those people that live in tents or in different uh, towns and that they take care of the cattle. But relates for their physicality. Huh? And the other is Yubal. And in order to write Yubal, means also a stream, a flow of current of, of water from the cerebral spinal fluid. It's also the father, it says there, of uh, those that handle the harp and organ. The harp and organ. But those are more civilized people. They live in the cities. In order to handle the harp and the organ or all of those instruments, you need a lot of uh, uh, development in your intellect. But those elements or those forces that are developed in any society comes from the cerebrum and spinal fluid or the brain and the spinal column. That is the two children that good for nothing has with the fluid of odd, the, the energy of odd, Lamech and his first wife. But the other wife is called Zila, which means phantom. That is in relation, of course, with the left side. Because if the first wife is in relation with odd, which is the right side, the positive force of the father. That's why it's called that they are father of this and father of that. Parenting, fathering. But the other side is Zilla. Right? And that Zilla, of course, means ghost, phantom. It's related with the left side. That phantom, that ghost. Is Lilith, the night. And Lilith is a mother of fornication. And all of that uh, sexual abuse that Lamech was doing. So, of course, uh, uh, Lamech, good for nothing, has another son with, uh, with Zilla, which is to Balkain. You see that? Again, is the left side. To Balkain is the left side. Meaning, somebody that is a transmitter that transforms the energy of the nest or the fire of sex in the wrong way. An alchemist, in other words. That's why it works with iron and other uh, copper, I believe, or brass. Those that knew at that time how to work and to awaken evil and for evil. And that's why he was nourishing himself with Nama. Is what we call Nahema. The evil beauty of Nahema. In other words, he was taking advantage of the force 
of the right side, which is in the physicality, which is Nama, which is called that handsome force. You see in this day and age, for instance, people that uh, are, we call uh, beautiful, physic physically speaking, that relates to Nama. People that extract the force of the father, the right side of their fluid, just for their physical appearance. That's Nama. And that's why he says that what's a sister? But that word sister also in Hebrew means nurse. So in other words, we said that Tuval Cain was nursed by Nama. In order to develop uh, powers in Nod, in Klipoth, Tuval Cain was developing. In that way, the, the force of, of the father, the right side, which is called Tob, good, ha Habel. If you observe uh, the two names of Yuval and Yaval, ends with Bet and El. But instead of the He, they have the Yod, and they have the Yod and the Vav. Yabal, Yubal, related with the forces of Habel, but just for the physicality, purely for that. And this is how we live in this day and age. People are so identified with their physicality, with the forces of their cerebral and spinal fluid, just in order to be strong, athletic, and if they learn about the psyche of the spirit, they want to develop powers, expenses of that force. And that's why Lamech said, you see, the good for nothing. Cain killed Abel. But Lamech said, listen to my voice, you wives of mine. The two wives, the two currents in an organism. I kill Anish. It says the word Amen. But that is a fire. I kill a fire with my wound. He says. That fire is a fire of the cerebral and spinal fluid. And this is what the people of this day and age, which are good for nothing, are killing that fire which is in the cerebral and spinal fluid for nothing. This I kill Anish, that's fire with my wound, and a young lad, he has the other side, you see, of the sexual force, with my hurt, that is the burata, the soul. And you kill, the good for nothing, kill their soul just in trivialities. That's a young lad, the soul which is there already in chains. So therefore, Lamech says, if Cain has to be avenged seven times, I will be avenged 70 times seven. So, when you perform that 70 times seven, that's the other repentance. We are good for nothing, but still we can repent. Because this Lamech has to bal Cain, which is us. We have to repent 70 times 7. And why? Because the seven sephiroth here, which relate to the Ish, which is the man, relates to the 10 sephiroth of the tree of life. 10 times 7 is 70. But if you multiply 70 by 7, you have 490 which synthesize the 49 levels of the mind. That's why in Gnosticism we state, we have to repent 49 times. But Jesus said the same thing like is in Genesis. I don't remember in which part of the Bible, but Jesus says, Peter asked him, Master, how many times do we have to forgive our neighbor? Seven times? And he says, no, 
I told you that 70 times 7. That means that he is saying not only you have to rise the serpent seven times in order to be forgiven. But 70 times 7 means to go in meditation and to go deeply and to annihilate the Amalekim, the Nephilim, the Geburim, the Raphaim, and the Anakim, which are within us. All of us are legions that God wants to destroy. They live in our 49 levels of our subconsciousness. So now, of course, <coughs> we are those Lameks, good for nothing. But by repenting, you can't develop, because if you read the next chapter, which is not there in the Bible, you will find that the same names are children of Seth, but in different ways. And that Lamech is the father of Noah. But that is after doing all of this that we had to do. So we have to repent 70 times 7. And we will reach that. And then is the next verse in the Bible that says, And then Adam knew Eve again. That, all of that we had to do. Then Adam and Eve which is our cerebral and spinal fluid in the sexual fluid of sex, new again, and they have the third son, which is Seth. You see? Seth, of course, is the outcome of an alchemical work and psychological work. The alchemical work is in sexual magic by avoiding the orgasm and knowing how to transmute the sexual force. And the psychological work is meditation. And only to dig that deep down into the 70 times 7, the 49 levels of the mind. So there, Seth appears. And then Eve says, okay, now I have this son, Seth, which is replacing Habel, that Cain killed. And because of that, Seth has uh, another son which is called Enosh or Enos says the Bible there Enos Enosh or Enos is translated into English human being that's the word Enosh in, in Hebrew because Ish is man Adam is also man, but is related with the chemical forces. But when you said human being, you said Enosh. So the human being, Enosh, knowing good and evil, is the son of Seth. And that's why in the beginning we say that the Sethians, those that were working with the fire, knew that the son form nest within us and that constitute the serpent and that is what we have within Cain, the serpent, the nest and by doing the work we enter into the human level that means that we are not humans people can call us human of course because there are many books that say that we are the human being no the human being as we said in other lectures is the king of nature we are the killers of nature. Because Cain kills nature. Cain kills the divine nature in us, which is Habel. And after that, goes outside and keeps killing other creatures. Destroying the environment. See how this society is. This society was created by Cain. On all of those generations that are called Irad. Enoch, Irad, Mahalel, Metuhalel, Lamech, and Tubal Cain. So all of that is inside of us. It's not, they are not outside, they are inside. Because when Enosh is being born from Seth, 
It is written there. And then those humans were starting to pronounce the name of God again. What is the name of God again? yod heh vav heh Because the whole He that was fallen because of the evil deeds of Cain returns again into the other letters. And then is when we pronounce yod heh vav heh the name of the Lord inside of us. Then is when we said we are made into the image of yod heh vav heh into the image of God. But to say now that we are into the image of God is a joke. Because we are fallen. We dropped from the tree of life into the land of Nod. This is not the image of God, but the image of Lucifer, the image of Satan. The fallen Lucifer. That Lucifer is that light and that fire fallen within us and transformed into Satan. That's why Jesus said, you are children of the devil. And the lust of the devil you want to do. Because he's your father. It's true. Because of the fall of uh, uh, Adam and Eve in Eden. We became a Luciferian humanity. Before we were Edenic humanity. But when we started using the fire of Lucifer in the wrong way. We were children of Satan. And this is where we are right now. Lamech, good for nothing. Now we have to return into the level of human being. But we have to see that everything is related with our own physicality. If we don't start returning the hay, which is the physicality, toward the spirit, performing the religare, the rebinding, the religion in us, we are lost. doesn't mean that you have to go to any particular church and kneel there and beat your chest and say, Father, I f- forgive me because I sin. That you, ha- you should do that to your own inner father. And that is a process of repentance in which we annihilate all of that evil force within us. In which is written, of course, in symbology with the with, with Cain. Now that letter Vav is repeated, is in the head, is in the heart, is in, is in the sex. That is the Habel that is dead in us. The letter Vav, I said, is the number six. Six, six, six. The beast is 166 is inside of every single good for nothing. Lamech. Because there is Tubal-Cain. So, do you have le- uh, questions? Yeah? The path to repentance, does it begin before we get married or does it begin as soon as we get married? Repentance is uh, different levels, of course. There is that repentance by the word. When you do something bad and you feel remorse, and you said internally, Father, I repent of this, and then you meditate. Hmm? Of course, the first is the uttered word of repentance, which belongs to Malkut. That's good. To repent of that. But that is not the real repentance. The repentance that is true, truthful, is related with Bina, with the Holy Spirit. Because there is where we find, in Bina, we find, as we explained in the beginning, the mystery of yod father, mother, and Ben, the son. That's why we have to pronounce E-A-O with the word in order to repent and start transmuting the sexual energy. We begin, of course, as single people. The bachelors and bachelorettes start by knowing how to rise the orb, that cane, which in all of us is fallen. Because when that serpent, cane, that entwines in the caduceus of Mercury, 
was standing, it was, of course, positive. But when we fornicated, that cane, that fire, or that serpent, went down. And when it, went, it goes down, it's forming the tail of Satan. You see? The tail of Satan, that is, that is depicted in the devil, is really obd, going from the coccyx downwards. Because we throw the energy. The sexual force of our nature is going down. So therefore, the energy is forming that tail in the psychology of each one of us. If you go consciously in the astral plane and you awake, you will see that everybody has a tail. As long as the perversity that they have in the physical plane. That tail is nothing else than Cain, the obd, that is still, uh, still in the ground in the wrong way. Now we have to do it in the right way. We have to till the ground, but that's the ob. Ob and odd are in that chapter. If you read it in Hebrew, you will see how that ob and odd are in a whole chapter in different ways. In order for you to understand, because as we said, Genesis is a book of the Gnostics. It's a book of alchemy. That only knowing Kabbalah and alchemy you will understand. Otherwise, you fall into mistakes. What is the wife of Cain? It's Isha, the fire of the sex. That is the wife of Cain. This is what we have to understand. So we have to learn how to manipulate that fire of sex in order to start repenting. And of course, seven times seven. The seven times in the physical plane and then in the rest of the other seven bodies. At least let us start as bachelors or bachelorettes or married people in the physical plane. And thereafter, we go up in all the levels. That's the true repentance. True repentance relates with alchemy. Relates with fire. And with a lot of meditation, comprehension. Because remember that bina, the Holy Spirit, means comprehension, understanding. Intellect as well. Yes? How can you manipulate that fire when you admire um, your partner that's not great in what you do? Or, you know, how can you be able to conceal that energy? Um, how you will, you see, even in the word able to do the transmutation, even if that is able that we're talking here, Abel, how you do it? Well, you have to pray. You have to pray to your inner being. Because in the sexual act, either your partner agrees or not with the doctrine, there is always a fight. There is always a struggle. So each one of us has to control the, the sexual act, the sexual energy. Of course, if the partner cooperates, it's better. Because then we can transmute and rise again the fallen serpent towards the brain as the angels. Because the angel has the two serpents or the two forces of the caduceus of Mercury towards the brain. But the demons have one, which we explain, the fluid of the, of the brain and the spine towards the brain. And the other goes down forming the tail. With the tail, the demon fornicates. And with the other, they nurture the brain. So, of course, uh, the woman in this case, since she is passive, she has to pray a lot. If the man is the one that has to uh, receive cooperation of the woman, that's difficult because the man is active. It's more difficult. So, of course, <coughs> there has to be always a uh, 
cooperation, whether the partner likes it or not, in order to, uh, to do and to respect the free will of each one of us, in order to transmute, to learn how to transform and to have to rise that energy in an organism. And if you pray to your inner God, to your inner Elohim within, he will assist you. And she also will assist you because we always said he, but really God is male-female. She will assist you and give you strength, which means willpower <coughs> in order to perform it. Because Cain, in each one of us, is very strong. Abel is weak. Now we have to make Abel strong by forcing Cain to cooperate and to make the man into the image of God, knowing good and evil. Your question? Well, the, the awakening, uh, the, the question is, does the sexual force awake us? Do we have to do something uh, else after awakening? Well, the awakening is a process. It doesn't mean that you will awake uh, instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Just with the first uh, week or first month or first year of transmutation, no. That awakening is gradually. As uh, long you... Uh, transmute the energy and you annihilate your own psychological cane within. Because there's a, a lot of aggregates that depend of cane or desires in other words. So when somebody is completely awakened 100 percent is because that one has no, no psychological aggregates. No giants within him. He has not Amalekim neither Geburim, neither Nephilim, neither Raphaim, etc. Those are the legions which are inside, which always want to build the Tower of Babel. We have to, to be strong. When we defeat all of them, we're completely awakened. It is impossible to say, oh, somebody is going to awake without annihilating the ego. No. It could be that we'll awake, but down there, in Klippoth. That's another thing. The consciousness bottled up within the ego awakes in Klippoth. And that person is fully awakened down there because of the Kundabafer organ. That's called the orb down is the Kundabafer. When it's going up is the Kundalini. So the awakening is by steps, by degrees, according to our repentance, which is something psychological. You have another question? Yes? Why is, I question why should we have to carry the burden of Cain's actions? Because we are Cain. Why we have to carry the burden of Cain actions? Because we are Cain. That's the point. Cain is not somebody that existed, a person that existed in the past. Symbolizes the mind. Symbolizes the evil actions that we start doing it, not only in this life, but in other lives. It's an archetype that exists within every person. It's like we are saying, for instance, why do I have to move my feet when I walk? Well, because I'm walking. And if I don't want to move, then I have to stop. So why do we have to carry the burden of Cain? Because we are Cain. And why is Abel dead? Because our soul is dead, which is Habel. That's the breath inside of us. It's not a chemical work. The problem is that... Uh, Humanity learned about Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel in the stories because the ones that were teaching about this myth of Genesis never understood it because they were not initiates. The book of Genesis and the whole Bible were written 
by initiates, for initiates, in order to teach them what to do. But somebody committed a mistake of giving the Bible to whole humanity so that humanity will believe in what is written there. And since somebody doesn't understand what is there, written there, they made up a lot of stories. And they said that we are children of Adam and Eve without understanding that Adam and Eve is related with our physicality and with all their symbols. He says that Cain and Abel are the children of Adam and Eve without understanding that that Cain is the intellect, the mind that we have, and that Abel is the soul that we have. The outcome of a mistake that we perform in the past. That we forgot is another thing. But if you remember, you do a retrospection exercise, you will remember that in the past, we were not fallen. We committed a mistake and start living in the, in the land of Nod and reincarnating and reincarnating in different bodies and repeating the same mistake again and again and again and again. And still we are here. Now we are in this level repeating the same mistake. And we think that somebody did it, that mistake. But we didn't do it, no. That somebody that did it is us. Same ones. And of course, in order to comprehend more, we had to meditate, we had to uh, awake the inner senses in order to remember. Scarcely people remember what says, do you remember when you were five year old? When you were three? Oh, yeah, I remember. When you were two? Oh, difficult. When you were one? Oh, if scarcely you remember, when you were two or one year old, or maybe because there are people that don't even remember when they were seven, how are you going to remember the past lives? When you remember completely your life in this life that you have, even when you were coming out from the womb of your mother, then you will be able to go back in time and to remember when you were dying in an other body and going backwards like that. And you will understand that you are a soul that also is always betrayed by your own mind. And that mind is Cain that always returns with your soul in different bodies. We have to learn how to uh, uh, comprehend the stories of the Bible or the stories that are written in other books with consciousness. Not literally, like when you read a newspaper, because then you fall into many mistakes. Remember, the book of Genesis is a book of alchemy. And all of that, even the next chapter is told, talking about Noah. This is a relation with us too. If you enter, of course, into the path. Do you have another question? So, thank you very much. <music>